just wait for a few seconds it is going to get recorded okay should we start now should we start or not is my screen visible yes sir okay so here we guys have stopped and uh, you know in last lecture we guys have seen n number of things uh, such as you know we have gone for types of ecological pyramids and uh, this one is the point of discussion and uh, as i told you there are three different types of ecological pyramids and those three different types of ecological pyramids are uh such as uh first one is pyramid of number pyramid of biomass and pyramid of uh, energy so these are three different pyramids of uh, ecological or ecological pyramids and we are going to discuss all those three para ecological pyramids one by one one is uh, first one is number second one is biomass third one is energy and we will discuss these three pyramids one by one so starting with the first one that is pyramid of number so as uh, this uh, name reflects everything this one is the pyramid which uh, shows the number so what is this pyramid of number that i will tell you that i am going to explain you so i request you all to pay your attention and uh, from this you can understand the concept of pyramid of number it deposits the number of individual organism at different trophic levels of food chain so here in this particular pyramid uh, you know numbers are given and uh, numbers of individuals are given and uh, numbers of individual organisms are also there so at different uh, tropical levels we can find out what sort of numbers are there in food chain and if we want to understand the numbers which are involved in the uh, process or in the levels of food chains so that pyramid is useful uh, the animals at a lower end base of pyramid lower end means what as uh, we have that uh, pyramid in a different shape so at the lower level or at the base level that animals are there the animals are at the lower end base of pyramids of the chain and the most abundant successive links of carnivores decreases rapidly in number until there are very few carnivores at the top the pyramid of number ignores the biomass of organisms and it also docks not indicate the energy transferred or the use of energy by the groups involved the lake system provides a typical example of pyramid of system pyramid of number so here in this case of pyramid of number one particular you know system is followed of food chain so in this particular pyramid pyramid of number or in this particular food chain animals are at the base level or at the end level of the pyramid is it starts from you know bottom to top like that so at the bottom level or at the base level animals are there and after that uh, successive links of carnivores decreases rapidly in number until there are very you know few carnivores at the top and at the top carnivores are there so in this one if we want to get the idea about this pyramid of number we can have one example with us and that example is of what lake you guys have seen lake or lake means what a small you know uh, dam we call it or like, uh, a pond as such pond is very small so which is little bit bigger than the pond is called as lake and which is little bit uh, lesser than the dam is called as lake so in lake we can see such kind of ecosystem which is having pyramid of number shape so what is that that we can see if you look at this you can understand what is this ecological pyramid so here we can see the pyramid of number and here you can imagine how that pyramid of number is there so this one is the ecological pyramid and from this ecological pyramid you can understand the number so if you look at the last or if you look at the base point the number is more and that the number is of what producers then if you look at the second stage the number is also less than the first one and those can be called as you know primary consumers then third stage you can see only two number numbers and those are secondary consumers and if you look at the last one that is called as territory consumers 
so this is the pyramid of number if you look at the number pyramid this one is a pyramid as i told you pyramid is having this kind of shape like triangle shape and from that we can have subtle things so if you look at the left hand side of this pyramid you can see producers that is say uh, herbivores that is primary carnivores and the secondary carnivores so if you look at this the number is decreasing at the top if you look at this if you look at or if you observe from the top number is increasing and if you observe from the bottom the number is decreasing at the base end producers are more then primary consumers are lesser than the producers then secondary consumers are lesser than the primary consumers and then finally tertiary consumers are lesser than the secondary consumers and here what we are going to show here we are going to show the uh, producers consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers in numbers so this is what this pyramid of number is there i hope you guys have understood the concept of uh, pyramid of numbers in detail manner so moving on to the next one and that is pyramid of biomass we are going to understand this concept of pyramid of biomass in detail manner so what is this pyramid of bio, pyramid of biomass that also we can see here the biomass of the members of the food chain present at any one time forms the pyramid of the biomass what they have said this listen i'm going to explain you for you guys the biomass of the number sorry the biomass of the members of the food chain present at any one time forms the pyramid of the biomass so any one time they can form a pyramid of biomass how it is i'm going to show you through example or through pictorial presentation pyramid of biomass indicates a decrease of biomass in each tropical level from base to apex so here in this case of pyramid of biomass so what it indicates we can get information regarding how the biomass is decreasing in every tropical level from a starting from base level to apex level or top level for example the total biomass of the producers in gestel by herbivores is more than the total biomass of herbivores in the ecosystem so example they have given we are going to see that example in the picture that i am going to show you likewise the total biomass of the primary carnivores or secondary consumers will be less than the herbivores and so on so this will be the information that we can see in the picture look at this so this one is a pyramid and uh, from that we can easily understand the concept of uh, pyramid by biomass so here is the pyramid of biomass if you look at the number number is decreasing if you look at the number from top, uh, top the number is 10 then second one is 100 then 1000 then 10000 if you look at if you observe from it from bottom side then you can easily understand how it is uh, decreasing if you look at from top side you can easily understand how it is increasing so these are the you know this one is the concept and from this particular pyramid we can understand how it is uh, you know increasing if we look at from bottom how it is increasing if we look at from top so this kind of pyramid is called as a pyramid of biomass so here we have shown biomass here we have shown tropical levels if you look at the tropical levels if you look at the producers level grass is the producers then if you look at the primary consumers grass hoppers that we call them grass hoppers and uh, this particular insect is called as grass hopper he lives on the grass he eat i'm uh, sorry he eats grass the secondary when it goes for secondary consumers that is toads uh, see this uh, insects are eaten by frog or toads so they are they are the secondary consumers and if it it is there if you look at the last one that is tertiary consumers that is snakes so this kind of biomass can be shown by using this particular uh, pyramid which is called as pyramid of biomass i hope you guys have understood the concept of pyramid of biomass then third one pyramid of energy that we are going to see now are you there in the meeting or not are you listening boys and girls hello are you listening or not yes sir yes sir okay so we are talking about the another one and the third type of pyramid and this will be the or this could be the last one pyramid of energy and here we are going to see the pyramid of energy how it is and uh, through example i am going to show you how how it can be 
when production is considered in terms of energy when we consider our production or production in terms of energy then this particular pyramid of energy is applicable the uh, pyramid indicates not only the amount of energy flow at each level at actual role the various organisms play in play in the transfer of energy so here in this kind of pyramid what we are going to understand we are not going to understand only the flow of energy at the same time we are going to understand the role of various organisms play in the transfer of energy the pyramid of energy is constructed in the quantity of organisms produced for unit time so here we are going to see how that particular organism has produced the energy and that we are going to see according to per unit time so if you look at the pictures you can easily understand but before that i'm going to show you this particular uh, pyramid of energy is made to understand the flow as well as the role of various organism in transferring the energy as well as we are going to see uh, the quantity or the production quantity of each organisms in case of energy so how it is it can be understood by one more example and uh, or by one more pyramid of uh, energy if you look at this you can easily understand this and here is an example uh, what example is shown here if you look at the number again the number shows that uh, it is uh, you know what we call it it is in decreasing if we observe it from the bottom or the base it is decreasing uh, if you look at the numbers number is uh, you know uh, 10 lakhs then 1000 then sorry 10000 then 1000 then 100 and then 10 only so in uh, right left hand side what we have written territory consumers consumers uh, secondary consumers primary consumers and primary producers so these are the things and from that uh, we can understand the energy uh, pyramid uh, energy first of all we get it from sunlight so this one is the source of sunlight then that energy that we get from primary producers then the energy that we get from secondary consumers then primary or uh, secondary consumers primary sorry primary and then secondary and then tertiary consumers so from this particular picture also we can understand the concept of uh, pyramid of energy i hope you have understood this concept of pyramid of energy then next one classification of uh, ecosystem we are i think that uh, pyramids of consumers are uh, pyramids of energies are over now we are going for ecosystem and we are going to understand the classification of ecosystem in a detailed manner so there are uh, you know two types of ecosystems actually we have and uh, and those two different types of ecosystems are terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystems so what is terrestrial ecosystem and what is aqua aquatic ecosystem that i will tell you if you look at the first one that is terrestrial ecosystem which in which in encompass the activities that take place on land so whatever activities that we uh, organize that we come across on the land those can be called as terrestrial ecosystem uh, here we see the activities which are taken on the land only that we will use uh, need to remember so whatever activities whatever ecosystem we see on land that is called about terrestrial ecosystem when it comes to aquatic ecosystem the system that exists in water bodies only so inside the water whatever ecosystem you see that particular uh, ecosystem is called as aquatic ecosystem and whatever ecosystem you see on land around us including we people it becomes terrestrial um, ecosystem so when it comes to terrestrial ecosystem there are three different uh, ecosystems that we can see and when it comes to aquatic ecosystems again there are three types of ecosystems you can see if it comes uh, if it is when we talk about sorry when we talk about a terrestrial ecosystem there are three which are there forest ecosystem that we can see in the forest only then second one is desert ecosystem that we call it uh, valvant desert ecosystem and the last one grassland ecosystem so these are the three which are coming under the category of terrestrial we are going to see all these three one by one even we are going to see remaining these three which are under the category of aquatic ecosystem so in uh, under the category of aquatic also there are three more which are the marine ecosystem freshwater ecosystem 
and storing ecosystem. So these are the three. So in total, we are going to see uh, six different ecosystems under two different main heads. And those two different main heads are terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystems. I hope you guys have understood the classification of ecosystem. Once again, I repeat, what is terrestrial? The activities that we come across as a part of ecosystem on land only, those can be called as terrestrial. And the activities that we come across inside the water only, those can be called as aquatic. In simple term, the ecosystem that we see on the land, that can be called as terrestrial. And in other words, when it comes to aquatic, whatever ecosystem that we see in the water, bodies or water, those can be called as aquatic ecosystem. I hope you have understood. Clear? Am I clear or not? Hello? Do you understand whatever I see? Yes, sir. Say yes or no. Yeah? Why you are taking this much amount of time to say just yes or no? Okay. So now, uh, starting with the first one, that is terrestrial ecosystem. Under the concept or under the category of terrestrial ecosystem, the first one is what? Forest ecosystem. Forest ecosystem means what? Whatever ecosystem that you see, that you observe, that you experience in the forest, forest itself, it is called what? Forest ecosystem. So I'm going to tell you, undistributed areas with moderate to high average annual rain, perception, Precisions tend to be covered with forest, which contain various species of trees and smaller forms of vegetation. So here, when it comes to forest ecosystem, whatever ecosystem that we come across in the forest, especially with the rain, with the forest that which have covered, and the species, various species which are contained, even trees and smaller forms of vegetation that we come across in the forest. Those are the part and parcel of this forest ecosystem. There are three important types of forests that are, as we know, uh, there are different types of forests, as we know that. So there are only three important we have taken here. Tropical green forests, then temperature deciduous forests, and coniferous forests. What are they? Just for the information that I have given here. Then, Tropical rainforest. What is this tropical rainforest? That is also mentioned here. So they are found near the equator. We can find them near the equator. No issue at all. We can find them near to the equator. Then these forests have a warm annual warm annual mean temperature. You can see this kind of forest at uh, forest at a warm annual mean temperature. So the mean temperature is the criteria to see such kind of forests. Then these forests have high humidity and heavy rainfall almost daily. So where you can see this kind of forest, where there is a heavy rainfall, high humidity, and uh, almost daily there is a rainfall. In, this, uh, in such kind of areas, you can see such kind of tropical rainforests. These forest forests consist of both leaf, evergreen plants. What sort of plants you can see in such kind of forests? That they have given board leaf, ever evergreen plants you can see over there. These trees have larger surface on their leaves that allows them to collect more sunlight and do photosynthesis extensively. If you look at their leaves, uh, you know, what do we call it? Uh, leaves, the leaves are, you know, um, the leaves or leaves are, you know, having broader surface or larger surface. Why this borders or larger surface is given for the leaves? Because our leaves, because uh, that particular border surface or larger surface is useful for photosynthesis process. And if it is broader, they can go for photosynthesis processes, process excessively, extensively. And that is what that kind of larger surface is given for their leaves. And the last one, tropical rainforests have wide varieties of species. If you use it, you can see they have very, very wide varieties of species over there in tropical rainforest. So this is for tropical rainforest, if I'm not wrong. So this is for uh, first one. Now moving on to the next one. What sort of biodiversity we can see in this kind of forest? So biodiversity and its conservation is the point of discussion, my, my dear friends. 
So as far as biodiversity and its conservation is concerned, uh, we know we want to understand the concept of biodiversity first. And after that, we are going to say how it can be conserved, what are the methods of conservation of uh, or how it can be conserved, that also we are going to discuss. So before going to start this particular concept that is biodiversity and its conservation, let me let me ask you one question. What do you mean by biodiversity? Bio means what? In Marathi, what do we call it? Bio? I think those uh, who are having back, I think you all have studied science in the 8th, the 9th and 10th standard. There is no issue at all. You guys have gone through science. What is bio? It's biology. Am I right or wrong? Bio means biology? Say yes or no? Come on. Bio means biodiversity means what? Biological diversity or not? If I say if it is if I say biodiversity is biological diversity, am I right or wrong? Come on. Huh? Right. Hmm. Okay. Your answer is correct, but why you guys are taking this much amount of time to answer my question? It's correct. Biodiversity means what? Biological diversity. And in India, we have tremendous biodiversity. If you visit any part of our country, you can see something different as far as biological diversity is concerned. See, uh, if you visit Maharashtra, you can see different biodiversity. If you visit Calcutta or if you visit Bengal, that is West Bengal, you can see different sort of biodiversity. If you visit Jammu and Kashmir, we, you can see different sort of biodiversity. Because India is a diverse country in terms of what culture, in terms of bio, biological diversity also. So that sort of things that we are going to discuss. Biodiversity we have. There are certain things which are you know very rare, and we are trying to conserve that. And for the purpose of biodiversity conservation, government also even it is uh, even central government and uh, state government they are also taking some efforts to conserve biodiversity. As we know that uh, central government is uh, running one campaign from last ten or fifteen years. And that campaign is what? Save tigers. The number of tigers is decreasing in India. This old government of India has taken one initiative. That initiative is called about Save Tigers. Why that uh, initiative is taken by the government of India? To maintain or to conserve biodiversity in India. Such kind of so many initiatives are taken by the government of India to protect or to maintain biodiversity in our country. So we are going to understand what is biodiversity um, and, and, and how it can be conserved. Look at this. Biodiversity is the variety of life on earth. In India, as far as variety of life on earth is very diverse, very diverse. Even if you look at the people also, they are very diverse. They are not seen. If you visit South, people are different. If you visit Maharashtra, people are different. If you visit, you know, Seven Sisters. Manipur, Meghalaya, Assam, Odisha, their people are also different. If you visit uh, Jammu and Kashmir, people are different. If you visit, uh, you know, what we call it, uh, UP, people are different. So there is a diversity in India as far as life on earth is concerned. So as far as we are taking example of India, actually it is applicable for the entire world. And this is what I told you. This is what I wrote like this. Biodiversity is the variety of life on Earth, not India, not US, not any particular country. I'm talking about on Earth. And so if you want to understand the biodiversity of life on Earth, if you visit any country, you can see different set of people. If you visit Sri Lanka, people are different. If you visit Pakistan, people are different. If you visit US, people are different. They are diverse than each other. And this is what called about biodiversity. Biodiversity is not only applicable for we people, it is applicable for plants, trees and animals also. So it includes all life from, uh, from uh, all life forms, sorry. It includes all life forms from the unicellular, fungi, protonzoa and bacteria to complex multicellular organisms such as plants, birds, fishes and animals. If you look at anyone, for example, if you look at the fish, if you look at the fish or if you take an example of fish, in fish also, there are n number of varieties. 
n number of you know varieties we can see in fish or fishes if we want to see the variety of birds n number of birds are there if you want to see the variety of plants n number of plants are available according to the country according to the nature according to the that particular area if you look at the animals even animals are also in different categories and this kind of thing is called what uh, biodiversity in all those things then biodiversity is the variety of flora and fauna on this planet earth so you guys have to find out this uh, meaning flora and fauna on this planet earth so this is the variety of what these two particular concepts you guys have to find out the meaning of these two concepts by today and you guys have to tell me in tomorrow's session what is flora and fauna which are available on the planet earth so this is the task for you guys the concept of the, the concept reflects the interrelated relatedness of genes species and ecosystems so in this particular concept of biodiversity basically this biodiversity concept is interrelated and it shows interrelatedness of what genes species and ecosystems then because genes are the components of species and species are the component of ecosystems see how it is correlated how it is interrelated that we can understand by this particular statement which is made here because genes are the component of species and the species are the component of ecosystem and this is what we can see such kind of um, biodiversity in our world diversity may be defined as the number of species present in a community a major term as species richness diversity is nothing but what a species richness it shows how species are reached we can see a number of species there is no limit as such if you look at the human being only we can see different types of human beings nobody is same nobody is perfectly same we can see some similarities but they are not uh, clearly same there are some exceptions as far as queens are concerned but as far as species are concerned they are totally varied than each other and here only we can see the richness of species and that is the diversity so in biodiversity and its conservation we are going to highlight so many things here and those are the part of biodiversity and its conservation look at this here we can see some biodiversity here we can see some animals here we can see some birds here we can see some uh, plants and these are the parts of what all these are the parts of what biodiversity it varies according to the particular area okay there are certain things which are available in that particular area only genetic diversity that we are going to discuss now as far as genetic diversity is concerned we, what do we call it genetic in marathi monosutra so here as far as this genetic diversity is concerned i'm going to explain you some concepts which are or some information regarding genetic diversity and after that i will show you what sort of genetic diversity is there it refers to the total genera, uh, genetic information contained in the genes of individuals of plants animals and microorganisms so here we talk about genetic information which is contained in the genes of individual plants animals and microorganisms so we are going to see what sort of genetics are involved or contained in that particular thing the genes found in organisms can form enormous number of combinations each of which gives rise to some variability genes are the basic units of hereditary information transmitted from one generation to another to another generation so genes are nothing but what genes are transferred from one generation to another person or another uh, generation as we know that uh, sometimes we say that i look like my mother i look like my father i look like my grandfather i look like my grandmother why because genes are transferred from one generation to another generation so this is the concept of genes diversity then when the genes within the same species show different versions due to new combinations it is called genetic variability understand what they have said when the genes within the same species show different version due to new combinations it is called 
generic variability when it is called a generic variability when we can see this kind of things when it is uh, different or species show something different version due to new combinations when new combinations are taking place it can be called as genetic variability now we are going to understand from one example here i have taken one example to show you if you look at this it's very interesting this one is the corn if you look at the corn this kind of uh, genetic or variety in genes of corn you can see here look at this what sort of you know genetics is there or genetics diversity that we can observe if you look at the corns some of them they are yellow some of them they are white some of them they are you know uh, purple some of them they are you know uh, light blue and there is a mixture also some of them they are mixed white and blue so how this is possible this is possible with the help of what genetic uh, diversity this is called a genetic diversity we guys have seen only one that is yellow and white apan fakto ekas color sama kas kan is bagitle apan evda kiti bagitle ka this is available and when white and what is this this is diversity vividta apan jara mhanto vividta this is called about diversity of corns or in corns so these kind of corns are available and if, what is this this one is the richness of species what shows this is called about richness of species which are available in the environment and this is called about genetic diversity then species diversity and uh, here we are talking about what sort of species diversities are there it means what diversities in species as i told you genetics and species uh, that we see in diversity so what sort of uh, what is species diversity that also we are discussing here a species generally consists of all the individuals organisms of a natural population which are able to interbreed generally sharing similar appearance characteristics and genetics a species is one of the basic units of biodiversity what they have said species are generally consist of what individual organi organisms of a natural population just a minute hello hmm जनरली they you know have sort of similarities in, in there because of what because of what interbreed and genetics and that is what they have because they have also have same sort of species and this is what they behave like that so uh, species diversity is also we found and this is what we you know walk differently our walk is not matching with somebody's walk we, our talk is not matching with somebody's talk our face is not matching with somebody's face why this is this is because of species and genetics which are there in our bodies remember then species richness is the simplest measure of biodiversity and is simply a count of the number of different species in given area so here we can understand the species richness as i told you we have a very richness of species and this is what we don't uh, we are not similar on the planet earth every person every plant every uh, living organism on the planet earth they are different we cannot say they are totally 100% same something is there and because of that we can say they are not 100% different and why it is because of the richness of the species that we found find around us the next one here look at this here you can see how the here it shows the diversity of species which we can see in our day to day life also and from that we can understand what it is exactly and how they are differ from than each other so this is the concept of species diversity now ecosystem diversity we are going to take it by to take it in tomorrow session and here i wind up here i stop my presentation
and I'll get back to the home screen, my dear uh, students. So friends, in this particular lecture, we have seen something important aspect of environment. I hope you guys have liked it. And uh, you know, whatever we have seen today, some of or some interesting lectures are uh, scheduled, and those are very soon to very those are coming very soon to meet you. So in those sessions, I will show you something interesting videos also to understand certain concepts. And uh, I hope you all are enjoying enjoying my sessions. And uh, you you all are not asking any question any questions. So I'm a little bit you know worried about your understanding whether you guys are understanding or not. If you are understanding, then it's okay. If you are not understanding that, uh, then it is not okay for me. If you have any doubt, questions, or anything else, you can ask me anything or any time or anywhere. So this is my. Uh, this is these are the contents from my aim for today's session, and uh, I hope there is no doubt as such from your aim. If it is there, you are free to ask me. Uh, first of all, I'll stop my present uh, recording so that you can ask your question.